Well, not much happening at the Iron Den, but these, as far as I can see, are the first dung beetles of the season. So it looks like a couple of them that are creeping out of the ground slowly but surely. So there's these two, and then they look like a third one in the background. But it's the first ones that I've seen for the summer months, which is really very, very cool. So no sign of any hyenas at the moment, which is par for the course and our luck this morning. And so at least we have some dung beetles, which can make me excitable and and is really cool to see. It's not something we have seen much of recently, so really, really cool. And this is an interesting type of dung beetle. It's not one that I, we see very often. In fact, I haven't seen these for quite some time. You can see they've got the little spiky ridges on their backs, which is not normal. Most of the dung beetles we see out here are those big plum-colored ones or the emerald ones, which are completely smooth on the back. So these are a slightly different one to what we normally get. And you can see the shovel-like head that they're digging through. And now the white stuff that they're crawling around is not soil. That is hyena dung that they are busy crawling around. Not that you'd want to crawl around on hyena dung, but it is very cool to see. Now, Michael, you're wondering when we're going to see our first dung beetles. Well, a little bit of rain that we've had is a good indication that they are starting to come out now. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see lots of them. And this is a bit of a courtship process, I would imagine. They're in a situation where they are going to start breeding and they're going to start trying to get their dung as rolled and larvae planted as soon as is possible because at the end of the day is that while the ground is still soft it's going to dry out very quickly and so digging and, and being able to bury balls of dung or larvae or laying eggs of any kind for any of the insects is going to be very difficult once it dries out so they need to make hay while the sun shines so to speak or while the sun doesn't shine actually is probably a better way to put it and to be able to then find the dung one and two then to lay larvae while it's still wet soil although the soil itself is drying out quite fast the good news is that it looks as though it's getting much brighter today so hopefully a bit of sun will come out by this afternoon it's definitely warmed up a bit since yesterday that's for sure and that will be promoting a lot of growth as well as insect life over the next couple of days which is fantastic but you can see the grass is almost alive with insects moving and look at the power that they have i know grass is not very heavy stuff but if you consider the size of these beetles in relation to the pieces of grass and how they're able to move lots of that moribund up and, and around and move bits of grass stalks and even various other things oh pugnacious ant as well arriving or is it polyrachis let's see looks like maybe polyrachis Yes, it is Polyrachis that is arriving on the scene as well. It's been a while since we've seen Polyrachis ants moving around as well and just coming and checking around what's going on. It's not going to be any harm towards that dung beetle, but dung beetle you can see is just kicking it away. It's like, off you go, I'm, I'm not interested in you. You must go somewhere else. And so the ant is then scuttled off. Now, Polyrachis you will see on its own quite commonly. It's not always in big groupings together. So it's quite common just to see one or two by themselves. What are you doing, dung beetle? You see, it's trying to mount the female, so male dung beetle at the back and female in front. And he's trying to get the business done. Whether or not they're actually copulating is anyone's guess at this stage. Now we're just going right over the top. And it's almost like another show of the wild dogs from the other day where everything is just completely confused. And now we have mating of the head at this stage, which is really not ideal once again. But so cool to see these little guys. Like I say, they such a big part of our summer months we're going to see so much of them coming out and and they really are one of the most fascinating little creatures and i love watching dung beetles go about their business they are incredibly interesting and intriguing now these particular ones are quite small still they probably in relation to the size of they're probably about the size of our thumbnail and um, the back end of them and then the little head that comes off so they're not very large dung beetles some of the dung beetles we get here will be very big be almost the size of my palm when they're fully grown so these are still little guys and are not the most colorful but at least it's nice to see them and it's allowed me a bit of time at the hyena den because we have no activity otherwise whatsoever Tina from New Hampshire, you're asking if dung beetles will have specific types of dung that they utilize and, and, and need. Um, no, not really. They tend to target more the, the herbivorous animals like elephant and rhino and hippo, those that are high in gut fermenters. So zebras would also fall into that, I suppose. Um, they're animals that don't digest their food nearly as much as the ruminants, and therefore there's a lot more nutrients within their dung that they're able to utilize and to feed off when they plant their larvae. In this situation now, these beetles are not 
actually eating this dung. You can see they're not harvesting it. They're not rolling a ball out of it. That dung is hard, hard, hard and is dried very hard. And so it's going to be impossible for them to harvest that. This is more them emerging out of the soil and then just starting to try and mate. There's actually no situation where they're collecting dung from hyena dung. They don't use predator dung at all. They'll use ruminants sometimes, but most of the time will be elephants, hippos, rhinos, um, buffalo does get used from time to time, but generally they've so overutilized the nutrients out of that dung that there's not much for the larvae to feed off. So they prefer the, the, the animals that have not digested their food nearly as much when they want to roll up balls and feed off them. And it's amazing how quickly these guys will dis dismantle a ball of elephant dung. You know, a ball of elephant dung is quite big and you get a, a whole bunch of dung beetles coming in and by the afternoon it is completely flattened. There's no ball left there. It's just bits of grass all over the place and it's completely broken up so amazing to watch these guys go about their business and i'm sure a lot of the birds are going to be very happy that dung beetles are around you'll find the rollers will go after them hornbills and varying other predatory species some even sometimes the shrikes go after them so it's going to be a, a increase in insect activity which is an increase in food and hopefully also then means the migratory birds start to arrive back as well now talking about birds in the background you might be hearing a call an incessant squeaking call and that is from our magpie shrikes that have just flown away of course they would have just flown away again like i say it's one of those mornings where things are just happening like that where trucks are going off the property hyenas are not at their den and birds are flying off when we want to show them at least the dung beetles have been cooperative although this dung beetle looks like it's on its back now and struggling to get come on there we go right at itself sometimes the ship does go a little bit awry and they have to then right themselves again CP, I have never been bitten by a dung beetle, to be honest. Um, so, and the thing about any beetle is it's only going to be attacked by the beetles that do bite. So things like the, you know, the longhorn beetles and, and those kind of things are only going to bite you if you pick them up and play around with them. If you just watch beetles like this, it's very seldom that they're going to come flying towards you and attack you with vicious jaws. More, more likely, it's just when we mess around and pick them up and play around with them. If you leave beetles alone and you and you don't do that, then no, you won't be bitten. But dung beetles, most of the time you can pick them up. They don't have very big mouth parts because they're not predatory insects. They're not going after food items that are of, that are moving and that they have to dismantle. And so generally they don't have very big mouth parts at all. It's very small mouth parts that are just there to process bits of vegetable matter more than anything else. So they won't really bite humans and I've picked up many a dung beetle in my life. And I've never can say I've never had an issue with one of them biting me. They do, however, have very sharp points on their legs, and those sharp points are almost claw-like, and they can dig in a little bit and, and can hurt a bit. But that's only if you're really kind of holding them too tightly. So generally, the rule with dung beetles, if you do pick them up, is just to kind of hold your palm flat and let them crawl around and do their thing. But we try and avoid picking up any of the animals out here as much as possible, even the beetles, because you can see with the cameras we've got, we're able to see them absolutely perfectly without having to pick them up and utilize them in any way or handle them in any way. It's probably the best way to put it. And so we try and leave them to do their own business and therefore we won't have too many worries about being bitten. Awesome. There you can see there's a third one now that's coming out. So really cool to see. Laura, you're asking how long a dung beetle will live. Well, it depends on the species of dung beetle. There's many different species we get out here. It's not just one species and each one has a different lifespan, but most of the dung beetles are just um, seasonal. So we find them kind of coming out in the summer months and then dying off once they've bred. So only a few months really, from now until March, April, when we start to see them disappearing. So 99% of them are pretty much like that once they've bred. They are insects that then die and, and kill over and you'll find lots of dung beetle exoskeletons towards the end of the summer months that where they've just died and you find them often around light sources it's just this exoskeleton that's left after all of it's taken place so not very long-lived insects unfortunately not like their cicada cousins that can live up to 20 years or the termites as well 20 years lifespan which is really quite a long time as well Right, I think we're going to leave our little dung beetles. No sign of any activity whatsoever at the den site of the hyenas. So.